So we're continuing with uh, God Wants You Well. We're on Lesson 17. Uh, words are powerful. But before we do that, let's do the questions for last week, the spiritual world. So number one was, why did the woman do, what did, the, what did this woman do when she heard of Jesus? She came to where he was. She came to where he was. Number two, when she touched Jesus, how soon did the fountain of her blood uh, dry up? Immediately. Number three, what had made her whole? Her fate had made her whole. Number four, what did Jesus increase in with God and man? Favor. Yeah, wisdom and favor. That's pretty. You got to to wrap your brain around that and think about it. Yeah, Jesus increased in wisdom and in favor. Number five, uh, does God ever get tired? No, God doesn't get tired. Number six, where did Jesus bear our sins in his own body? Number seven, what did God's people rejected? They rejected knowledge. Number eight, if we haven't heard God's word, what can we have? We cannot have faith if we have not heard God's word. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Number nine, God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Number 10, uh, God's words and his sayings are life and health to whom? Those who find his words and sayings. Number 11, and his words and sayings are health to all, all our flesh. Amen. Okay. So we'll watch this healing journey. Uh, it's episode 13. Uh, it's, uh, let me see here. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome, awesome, awesome worship service, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's get started with the, the lesson here. About 20 minutes in, so I don't want to spend, take up too much more time, but okay, like I said, we're on uh, Words Are Powerful, Lesson 17, and it says, when the woman with the issue of blood had heard of Jesus, she, she came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole, Mark 5, 27 to 28, amen? Here, the, here, she cooperated with another law. She spoke her fate. God's word plainly, repeatedly reveals this truth in many different places. Someone might cite Matthew, uh, Matthew's account of this same instance where it says, For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Matthew 9, 21. According to Matthew, uh, she said this within herself, but according to Mark, she spoke with her mouth. Which is it? I believe it's both. Before we speak things out of our mouth, we say, uh, we say them within ourselves. The scriptures don't contradict each other. She did both, and this is one of the laws that governs faith. Amen? The spoken word is one thing that's really important is when we speak, there is, there is power to the spoken word when we're, uh, especially if you're dealing with something and you feel, you feel the fear coming on, you feel the anxiety coming on, the spoken Spoken word is what's going to make the difference. When you speak out loud to it, you can you can say it in your mind, but there is power. You will know the difference when you speak it out loud. Amen. Uh, according to Matthew, uh, wait, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 18, 20 to 21. Our words are powerful. With our words, we can release life, and with our words, we can release death. That's really important, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't think about it, but our words is either speaking life or it's speaking death. Right. It's one or the other. All, none of our words um, goes dormant. Every word we're speaking is producing life or it's producing death. We need to recognize that there is power in our words, not only positive power, but also negative power. So release your faith. If you're whining, griping, and complaining, you're releasing the negative forces of unbelief. That unbelief 
will cancel out, counterbalance, and negate your faith. Many people pray and ask God to heal them. Then someone come come then someone comes up to them and asks, How are you? And they answer, Oh, I'm dying. The doctor told me this and that, and everything in my heart, uh, and everything in me hurts. They start speaking negative contrary to God's word, violating the laws governing faith. That's like short-circuiting an electrical current. The power may be there, but because they constantly short-circuit it, it's not producing the desired results. This is funny because that's what was happening today. I was trying to jump my lawnmower, my riding mower, and the battery was dead. I didn't realize it was out of gas. I came home and they told me, you gotta jump the lawnmower. So I just automatically assumed that it died because it, it, the battery was dead. So I go down there and I don't know what I was thinking, but it was sparking. I'm like, what in the world is going on? But I, because of my, on my truck, there was, there was some red, um, some kind of uh, lubricant or something on the, on the negative. So I put the negative on the positive and it wasn't working. The power was there, but because I didn't apply the laws of electricity, <laughs> I was sparking all over the place, right? There's a law to faith, and if you cooperate with the laws of faith, right? If we're speaking death, we're saying one thing, right? We're speaking life. We're praying, praying, you're asking God. We're seeking, we're doing the right thing. But if I do something on the, on the contrary, I'm speaking death into the situation, you're going, you're going against the law of faith. It's not going to produce. You must recognize that the word you speak are powerful. God created the heavens and the earth by what? How did God create the heavens and the earth? By his spoken word. That's pretty amazing, right? Mm -hmm. God spoke the entire universe into ex existence. He said, let there be light. Genesis 1.3, and the, the earth brings forth fruit. Genesis 1.11. The physical world, even your own physical body, responds to words. Your words are important. Many of you may think it doesn't matter what I say, but God's word reveals that it does matter what you say. What you say affects what you believe. It will affect your body, the devil, and even God. That's something to think about. Mm -hmm. Even God. God uses your words. This is one of the words important. This is one of the most important ways you release your faith. We need to speak God's word. In more than 40 years of ministry, I've prayed for thousands of people. Over the years, I've learned that when I'm praying for someone, it's very important that I speak faith-filled words. I don't ever speak for my doubts. That's important when you're ministering to people. Mm -hmm. There have been times that people have come to me in such bad shape that it caused fear and doubt to rise up inside of me. But I never spoke it. I only spoke my faith. I've seen people healed in spite of my unbelief because I never spoke it. Mm -hmm. That is really important there, right? Matthew 6, 31 says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, You can't keep a thought from coming, but you can keep from taking a thought as your own. Right? Yeah. We can't, we, we, we're going to have all kinds of thoughts coming. I was sharing about that on Sunday service. You know, we're, um, I really felt like God was wanting to do something different in a service um, the, the, pri the week prior. And um, as I'm just going play by play, as the Holy Spirit is leading me, my my natural mind is telling me, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, are you crazy? What are you doing? But I'm like, that's what I believe the Holy Spirit is telling me to do. So I just keep doing what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do, and it turned out good. Yes. Amen? You just got to be obedient to that and be obedient to what God is telling you to do. I didn't let what I, what I was thinking come out of my mouth as I was going through what God was telling me to do. So when this woman with the issue of blood said, if I could but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. She put a law of God into motion. We just saw that there is death and life in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 20 to 21. She spoke something positive and then when she acted on it, the power was released. Amen. It was, if you're fighting some type of sickness, you need to start speaking faith-filled words. You need to want the results of the word you're saying don't just speak what the doctors has said or how you feel speak what the word of god says about you and speak it in faith at first you may not totally believe it but faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god speaking god's word and continuing to speak it will help you believe it 
Amen? Amen. We've got to speak the word. Speak it out loud. You want to hear it yourself. <laughs> Spiritual power. Another passage of scripture that shows us the importance of our words is, Verily I say unto you, that whatever shall see unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Mark eleven twenty three. Three different times in one verse, emphasis is given to what you say. You must speak out your faith, not unbelief. When you speak your faith, spiritual power is released. It allows God to flow. Most doctors have adopted this philosophy, philosophy <laughs> that they never want to give uh, get your hopes up. They always try to give you the worst case scenario, thinking, you guys ever been to a doctor and they tell you all kinds of bad stuff? Worst case scenario, right? That's a blessing. <laughs> Thinking that the good, uh, that's good and the wise thing to do. I'm aware that they do it for liability reason, but you need to get people's hopes up and speak positive. You don't need to speak the negative things. When you're around somebody in a hospital room, don't talk about them dying. Mm -hmm. Hello? Talk to them about living. Release life with your word. Speak the word of God. His word will become life and health. To all their flesh proverbs 4 yeah. 22 there's power in our words yeah. amen, amen. And like i said when when you see andrew always doing this and i've kind of adopted that myself is that when i'm praying for people before when i first start talking to them and i ask them what's going on and they share a little bit i don't let them go on for too long i said a oh, piece of cake for jesus not a big deal thank you jesus mm -hmm. amen that's not going to dim the lights of heaven right you know, when you just speak it immediately, it produces faith and hope in the person because it's there's life to it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to speak to that mountain. Again, Jesus said, whoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, Mark 11, 23. The mountain here is referring to your problem. If you're sick and have a disease, speak to that disease. Say, cancer, you're dead. I command you out of my body in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Cancer, you're leaving my body now. The Bible says to speak to your problem, yet most people speak to God about their problem. This is <clears throat> this is simple, but it's profound, and it's an revolution, and it has revolutionized my life. When it comes to healing, we need to learn to operate in this principle. If we have pain in our feet, we should say, Pain in my foot, in Jesus' name, I command you to leave. We shouldn't say, God, please take away the pain in my foot. That's not what he instructed us to do. He told us to speak to our problem, not to speak to him about our problem. Most people aren't co cooperating with this truth. They are violating the law, and because of it, the power of God doesn't flow. We need to do what the Lord has told us to do. I remember ministering the truth to a woman in Charlotte, North Carolina, who had severe health problems. She was diagnosed in 1994 with all kinds of sickness and disease. She was in constant excruciating pain and suffered greatly. The doctor told her in 1997 that it was impossible for her to live much longer and that she would die within a month. When I prayed for her, it was in 2001. She had already gone four years beyond what they said she would live. However, she had a multitude of different things wrong with her and lived in terrible pain. I talked with her and explained some truths from the word concerning healing. Then I prayed with her and spoke to the pain. She had pain all throughout her body, so I commanded pain to leave. I didn't request it. I took my God-given authority as a believer and commanded pain to leave. Mm -hmm. Now, this is operating like the centurion, right? When the centurion, when he said, God, you just, Jesus, just speak the word, mm -hmm. and my servant will be made well. That is the optimal place to be. Amen? So what, I, what Andrew is teaching on right now is this is where we want to all get to, to this place when we're, um, we're, where our point of faith is at a place where we can just speak to the mountain and we see those things happen. Amen? Amen. Take authority and command. Uh, this brings me to yet another important kingdom law. Since God has already done his part through Christ's atonement, we need to take our authority and believe and command the power of God to flow. Ephesians, um, Isaiah 45, 11. Instead of us asking with a question mark at the end of the sentence, wondering what God is going to do, we need to believe and act on the truth that the Lord has already done it. By his stripes, we were, past tense, healed. That's 1 Peter 2, 24. So I spoke to her body. I spoke to the pain. I commanded it to leave. 
Instantly, this woman was free of pain for the first time in seven years. She started praising God, but then stopped and said, I still have a burning in my back uh, right along my, uh, my waist. How come the burning didn't leave? It's amazing, yeah, she, she received her healing, but there were still some things going on there. I responded, well, I didn't speak to the burning. You didn't tell me about the burning, so I didn't speak to that. So I prayed again, and, and this time I said, burning in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. And it left. Mm. Wow. It's that simple, huh? This woman was just beside herself, walking around and praising God. I spent almost half an hour telling her how to keep her healing because Satan will come to try to yeah. steal the word away. Mm -hmm. Okay, now listen to what he said. He said, he didn't say that Satan is going to try to steal the healing. He's try trying to steal the word away. It's a big difference. You cannot lose your healing. The enemy can try to bring sickness back on you or try to bring something back on you, but you don't lose your healing. The devil can try to get uh, snatch the revelation that you have, mm -hmm. right? The understanding that you have, but it cannot take away healing. He can try to bring it back on you. I told her what to do if she ever had another pain uh, burning or anything else like that. How the kingdom works. Sure enough, before she got ready to leave, she looked at me and said, the burning has come back. I said, well, I've already told you how to do it. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important. I mean, it's great to receive your healing by, you know, you go to this um, evangelist that has the healing gift or something like that, and you go up to the altar and you get prayed for and you receive a healing, that's great. But it's even better when you get revelation of this yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if you deal, if it comes back or something um, tries to come back on you, if you have revelation, you can deal with it at that time, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to go to every prayer meeting or something to get it from somebody else. You have the authority you understand how it works, so you can speak to it yourself. So I said, well, I've already told you how to do it. I'm going to join hands with you and agree, but you do the praying. You take charge of this thing. So the woman prayed a pretty good prayer, saying, Father, I thank you that it is your will to heal me. 30 minutes before, she had believed that God was the one who had given her the sickness. But she had received God's word. When I countered that unbelief, she prayed, Father, I believe that by your stripes I was healed. I claim my healing in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now that's a pretty good prayer compared to where she was pre uh, where she was previously. But I knew it wouldn't work. Knowing that the burning hadn't left, I asked her, do you still have any burning? Yes. Why didn't it leave? Because you spoke to God about your burning instead of speaking to your burning. Then I opened my Bible to Mark eleven twenty three and shared more about the truth with her, saying, you need to speak to your mountain. It's so simple. See, we, we change it up a little bit. Oftentimes, the difference between us receiving everything that the Word says and not receiving is simple things. It's doing what the Word says and not adjusting it a little bit. Right? The this prayer... Is what is going on here? Hang on. The healing journey is working now. Hang on. Uh, right? Now I got worship and. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. Now it's working. Okay, now I lost all my place and train atop there. Okay. Uh, okay, and the woman was just beside herself, walking around and praising God. Wait, okay, wait, no. Yeah, yeah. See, we change it up a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the like it's like when we're talking about how um, so much times in in ministry and churches we focus on our love for God, right? Instead of God's love for us. When the word says that we love him because he first loved us. Right. It's a simple shift, but it's a huge difference. If our focus is on how much we love God, then it's a performance-based doctrine. If my, my focus is on how much God loves me, that's how salvation comes, right? Mm -hmm. That's what the word says. Simple, but it's a huge <laughs> difference. And the same thing with this right here. How I, if I speak to it, or I, I can talk to God about the problem, or I can talk to the problem. 
I responded, well, I didn't speak to, you didn't speak to the burning. You didn't tell me about, okay. Then the woman was just beside herself, walking around and praising God. I got that already. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, she's ready to leave here, okay. So this woman prayed a pretty good prayer. I'll just read this part again. Father, I thank you. That is your will to heal me. I've done this. Sometimes I forget and still do this. 30 minutes before, she had believed that God was the one who had given her the sickness, but she had received God's word. When I countered that unbelief, she prayed, Father, I believe that, my, that by your stripes I was healed. I claim my healing in the name of Jesus. Now that's pretty good prayer compared to where she was previously, but I knew it wouldn't work. Knowing that the burning hadn't left, I asked her, do you still have any, have, uh, any burning? Yes, why didn't it leave? Because you spoke to God about the burning instead of speaking to the burning. Then I opened my Bible, again, talking about uh, speaking to that mountain in Mark eleven twenty three. She looked at me and said, you mean I'm supposed to speak to the burning, call it by its name, and actually speak to it? Yes, that's what the Bible says to do. You may think this is strange. It does sound like kind of strange, yeah? Mm -hmm. It seems kind of weird when you think about it, right? Uh but Jesus spoke to the fig tree in Mark 11, 12 to 26. He's the one who told us to speak to the mountain in Mark 11, 23. It works. It's the law in God in his kingdom. You don't have to fully understand it. When you flip a switch on the wall, you don't have to understand why your lights come on. You just do it and it works. Release your faith and exercise your God-given authority by speaking to that mountain. It'll work. Amen. That's really good right there. We don't really need to know how it works. We don't have to understand how it works. All we need to do is be obedient to what the Word says, right? I don't have to understand how electricity works. All I need to do is flip the, just do what I, I know to do and flip the switch. And the lights will come on, right? right? Yeah. Because it's a law. So the woman prayed against saying, burning in the name of Jesus. Immediately, she stopped and explained, it's already gone. That's all she had to say. God had set her free. I had dinner uh, with her over two, uh, over a year later, and she was still walking in divine health. It was a great miracle. One of the important keys I, was, um, I used was my words. Specifically, I didn't just speak positive words to God, but I spoke positive words to the situation. Okay, that's huge right there. It's not speaking to God about your problem. It's speaking to the problem. I took authority and commanded the situation to change. There are, there are some of the laws of, um, these are some of the laws of the kingdom of God. It may seem strange at first, but that's just how the kingdom works. Mm -hmm. A lot of things in the kingdom of God is strange. Mm -hmm. A lot of things in the kingdom of God, it goes contrary to what, we, what, what you would naturally think. Mm -hmm. Seed time and harvest, right? You would think that the way to gain is to hold on to your money. But the word says that if we sow seed, we'll reap a harvest. It goes contrary to what normally would seem to work, right? Yeah. The word oftentimes will do that. Because think about it. If it didn't go contrary and everything was what you naturally think, then it would require no faith. Mm -hmm. Right? Why would it require faith if that's what you would normally do anyway? So sometimes we need to do things in faith, trusting in God, because sometimes what is, it'll be contrary to what is naturally seems the right thing to do. That's just how the kingdom of God is. And you see that a lot in seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest, the greater revelation you get of seed time and harvest, you can see the wisdom of God in putting that in place. Because it goes against everything that you think to do in the natural and you just trust God and do it, I don't have to understand how it works, but I guarantee you it works. I've seen it work over and over and over and over again. I don't have to understand it. All I need to do is be obedient and it will produce. Mm -hmm. We need to receive it by faith. If you have a financial problem, speak to your checkbook. Your checkbook is speaking to you, saying, look at all that red. It's hardly any black. <laughs> the word didn't work. God isn't supplying your needs. You'll have those thoughts come to you as you look at your checkbook. So speak to the mountain. Say in the name of Jesus, my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19. I command, I command money to come into my account in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
I call it God's abundant provision into manifestation. My account receive money right now in the name of Jesus. I've literally done that one day and seriously writing contracts the next. Mm -hmm. you, know when, you know when things start slowing down? It's because I'm not exercising my faith. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm seriously... I, 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 having an understanding of seed time and harvest, I've, I've wanted, always wanted to try having a commission-based job. Mm. Because if you understand seed time and harvest, and you know how to get this thing to work, and if you have a commission-based job, then it should be easier to get that to work for you. And sure enough, I kid you not, it works. When it's not coming in, it's because I'm not speaking to it. I'm being lazy, and I'm just, just not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And as soon as I speak it out and I call it in, I call in finances from the north, the south, the east and west. I command any hindrance, anything that is hindering my, uh, my prosperity to be gone right now in the name of Jesus. I call in clients that are ready to buy or ready to sell in the name of Jesus. I speak to that exactly what I want. Right now my prayers are changing because the church is going to require a lot more of my time, so I'm calling in specifically. I'm not calling in a lots of lots of uh, uh, transactions right now. I have a lot of transactions. I don't need a lot of transactions. I want big transactions. <laughs> I want a couple big transactions every month. That's enough. Okay. So I'm speaking. I'm serious. I'm speaking more specifically. Yeah. I called in a lot, and I got a lot, and it's keeping me really busy. But a lot of them are small contracts. That's great if I'm getting my numbers up, which is what I needed to do when I first started to get my commission rate higher, right? I needed to get my numbers up, so I was just calling in everything. But now that my numbers are up, I'm, I'm being specific because I need to, I need to control my time. Mm. Amen? Amen? And that can work for you guys too. If you're working an hourly job, the way you call it in is you can call, just be obedient, call it in, and you'll see promotion come. Mm. You will see, I mean, it will come some way. But just call it in and make sure you speak against the enemy because he's going to try to block your prosperity. Right. So command it hindrances to be gone. You speak to it and it works. Amen? Amen. A month later, the guy came to me with an awesome report. He started clicking through. Oh, wait. So I commanded this. Wait. Repair. Uh, where, are where are we? He just finished reading. Okay. I'm, I skipped too far down here. We received by faith. If you have financial problems, okay, I talked about that already, right? Mm -hmm. About speaking to your checkbook, speaking to the finances. Concerning physical healing, speak to your body. I recently rebuked sugar diabetes in a man at one of my meetings. I didn't ask God to rebuke it. I did. The Lord had already done his part. God has already healed this man. It's just a matter of somehow, some, um, it's just a matter of someone here on earth receiving their faith by taking authority and speaking to the mountain. Repair and restore. So I commanded the man sugar diabetes to be gone. Then I spoke to his pancreas to come back to life and to begin to function properly. I did this because of because that was a part of his body that wasn't working properly. I commanded his insulin to come to proper levels and so forth. A month later, the guy came to me with an awesome report. He started clicking through the days of stored data in his electronic monitor that he used to test his blood sugar levels. I'm not exactly sure what it all meant, but on the day I prayed for him, he was over 1,100. Then it just started going down. It kept clicking through the data and showing me that every day it decreased. He was down to something like 108 at that time. This positive turnaround took place because I not only rebuked and commanded sugar diabetes to leave, but I also spoke to his body to be repaired. Okay? If you understand what's going on, and speak to that if, if it's whatever it is you know people that's dealing with cancer you speak to the cancer and you command their bodies to be restored because there needs to be some restoration there also amen mm -hmm. i've actually had my hands uh, laid my hands on people with tumors and inst that instantly left under my hand when i prayed and rebuked the cancer i could feel it go down but i've always realized that disease like that damage the body so i'll speak to the parts of the body that was affected and release God's healing power. I'll command the organs that were eaten away
to regrow and be restored. That's how I speak to the mountain. Amen? Amen. You know, one thing that I just feel like the Holy Spirit just saying this for, for someone here, that it doesn't matter what it is. I was just sharing this on Sunday. What is, what is your impossible situation that we're dealing with right now? I was sharing about how when Moses and the Israelites were at the Red Sea, and you have the Egyptians coming riding hard after them, and they're upset. All of their firstborns were ju just got killed, right? And they're, they're coming to bring vengeance. And they're not playing, right? And they're at the Red Sea, and they didn't read the story. They didn't read the Bible. They never saw the, the Red Sea part and read the story about them walking on dry land. But they're at this place, and they're in an impossible situation, and everybody's panicking, and Moses is there. He understands. Moses got this, and he says, just watch the deliverance of the Lord. What is your impossible situation right now? What is it that you need done? And what is it that God is too small to accomplish in our lives? What is too small? What, what are we making God too small in our lives to deal with? Are we shrinking God down to a size where it's impossible for God? Or are we elevating God to where he is, the great I am? The God that speaks and this entire universe comes into existence. What little thing now that I put things into perspective are you dealing with that you need to just speak to? What do we just need to speak to? Because they have the same power, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwelling within us right now. And when we speak that word, it will produce. Because it's a law in the kingdom of God. It's not a love issue. We already talked about that. It's not an identity issue. We already took care of that. It's understanding our authority right what is the four things again we're right there we need to understand our identity we got this down we got our identity down all of us got our identity down already we know that god loves us unconditionally we're operating in wisdom that's why you're here you're growing in wisdom right now right but now we're talking about the authority we have that authority all we need to do is speak to it The God's original intent for mankind was to be as God on this earth. That was God's original intent. Adam sinned, and because Adam sinned, he forfeited that authority. Jesus came, died for our sins, and restored that authority back to us. But the problem is, we do not use that authority we're still living like we're living under the curse, but we're no longer under the curse. That authority has been restored to us. So we have the God ability within us to speak things into existence, to call those things that are not as though they were, and we'll see it come to pass. We gotta stop making this so complicated because it's not complicated. Religion makes this complicated. Religion makes it all convoluted and messy and murky. The gospel is simple. It's made for simple. It's made for the average person to be able to get it. We make it complicated. Unfortunately, the church as a whole has made it complicated because we try to mix in. We try to be God in our own lives. We want to be God in our own lives. So what do we do? We make it a works-based doctrine so I can feel good about myself. I can make myself look good next to so-and-so. Right? But it's nothing to do with our works. The only work that matters is I, we accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. As soon as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that authority is restored back to us, and now I can walk in the authority, the God-given authority that God originally intended for us to have. So when I speak to that mountain, I speak to that sickness, I speak to that financial issues, I speak to that addiction, I speak to whatever it is, I use my authority, like the centurion, Jesus, you don't have to come to my house, just speak the word. 
Jesus was like blown away. A centurion, a Gentile, gets this. The Gentile gets this, and the Jews are totally clueless. The Gentile gets this because he understands authority. You got to understand your authority. Amen. Amen. Same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, mm -hmm. the same spirit that was there with Jesus and the Father, speaking the entire universe into existence, is the same spirit that's inside of us, waiting for us. The Holy Spirit is like waiting inside of us. Please release. Release it right now. Please just release it right now. Come on. Are you kidding me? That little thing? I was there when the Father spoke and the entire universe came to, into being. And you're dealing with that. You're letting that little thing ruin your life. You're living subpar Christian lives. Why? The Spirit is, let me loose. Just speak it into existence. Stop limiting what I'm trying to accomplish in this world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then again, it could be just Andrew special so that when Andrew prays, all these amazing things happen. Tumors disappear. You know why? Because Andrew just had a halo over his bed when he, when he was born, right? Yeah. Right? He got a special spirit inside of him. It's not the same spirit that we, we, we have inside of us, right? God, he, God, is, God is just, um, he's a he respecter of man. He loves some people more than he loves others. Silly, yeah? The only thing between Andrew, the difference between Andrew and any one of us is he knows his authority. He knows his authority. He walks it out and he sees amazing things happen. Mm -hmm. Is it easy? Is, man, you see the persecution that comes against him? It's like the torn in the flesh with the Apostle Paul for the abundance of revelation that comes against him. But man, he just keeps walking it out. Mm -hmm. And now his ministry is a worldwide ministry touching people all over the world. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he didn't back down mm -hmm. when it got hard. He kept pressing, kept pressing, kept pressing. Mm -hmm. Because he got revelation of the truth. Prayed for people and seen what happened. So with the joy set before him, he kept doing what he's doing. For the joy set before us, guys. We can see the same things happen in our, in our lives and the people around us. Amen. Oh, man, I tell you right now, who cares if the medical system fails, healthcare fails, who cares? We got all of us here. We got the change agents right here with the power of God living within us. Right? Yes. Think about it. Think about it. Somebody's struggling financially. Who cares? That's what the church is there for. Not the church so that we're going to be just so that we can minister to people, we can help them, and we can also encourage them, and they can get to the same place that we're at. Amen? Somebody that's struggling from addictions and stuff like that, it's not so that we can just be continuously handing out things to them, but we can help them in the moment and then get them to the place where we're at so that they can walk in the victory that we walk in. And they can be world changers themselves. Every single one of us has an SOI, a sphere of influence, right? Every one of us can be touching people's lives and making differences, making a difference in their lives. Mm -hmm. We've got to understand this truth, this, this law in the kingdom of God. We can't be tweaking the word to fit our own, our own whatever. It just makes the word of God, the traditions of man, make the word of God of no effect. It's just traditions of man. The traditions of man that makes the word of God of no effect. Mm -hmm. We get our traditions of how we do things and 
Auntie so and so loved Jesus, but she died. So and so was a strong follower of Jesus, and they're having financial issues. So that changes what the word says, right? Yeah. But see, we let those things affect what we believe. But that's why I keep saying this we got to guard our eye gates, we got to guard our ear gates. There might be truth to what is being said. You might be hearing truth by what is being said, but is it edifying? Is it bringing life or is it bringing death? Is that truth bringing life or is it bringing death? Is it edifying? Is it uplifting? Does it produce goodness inside of you? Does it produce faith within you? Does it give you hope? Is that truth, even though it may not be, is it truth that's producing positive things in your life or is it a truth that's producing negative in our lives? You can turn on some of the news and they, some of the news might be saying something that is true. But is it producing good in our lives? I can search the internet and I can find things that might be true. But is getting all that information going to produce anything good in my life? I can get into the word and I can guarantee you it's going to produce good. I can watch worship from carriers like this and be having a rough day. Or I can, I can turn that on and it can switch me, get me to a place emotionally so that I can come here and I can minister to you effectively. Because right now we're in a major part in this teaching. Either this is all going to go by the wayside and we're going to go back to the way we were living or we're going to get what we're saying right now. And we're going to let this affect our lives and we're going to, we're going to let this be a line in the sand and we're going to make changes. Because if we don't choose right now to do what the word says and be obedient to that and apply the laws of the kingdom of God, then que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be, we'll end up right back where we were like we never went through this teaching for the last few months. But thank God, none of us are going to do that, right? right. Amen. Amen. Because we got this. We got, we got it. You guys know how to use your authority now. You know how to use your authority. It's just the little things, guys. It's not, it's not, the, it's not the complete turnover. It's not the huge things that we got to do in our life. It's a simple switch. Mm -hmm. Instead of talking to God about our problem, we speak to the problem. Amen. I'm not begging and pleading God. Uh, I, it's one thing I have a hard time. If I go to a prayer meeting and everybody's begging God for something, I'm like, this is useless. This is not going to accomplish anything. We're begging God. We're asking God. God, please do this. God, please do that. When we just speak to it. Amen? We just speak to it. We use our authority. We speak to the mountain. We are the change agents in this world. We are the change agents in this world. You see someone going through something, you speak life into their situation. We can do that. We should be doing that. Amen? Amen. When I pray for people with something like arthritis, I'll rebuke the arthritis, arthritis by name. I believe arthritis is a demonic spirit, so I will be, rebuke the spirit and command arthritis to go in Jesus' name. That is huge right there. Arthritis is not something that is regular arthritis. There's a demonic part of it that, that is attached to that, that is affecting someone. That is a manifestation of a spiritual thing that you need to understand that okay so if you're only dealing with the with the with the symptom you got to get to the root you speak to the root it's a spiritual thing you command the spirit to be gone in the name of Jesus doesn't mean that the person is demon possessed or anything like that it has nothing to do with it is the person is being affected by a demon that's affecting them in that area it's manifesting in that area so you speak to the demon you, get, you deal with the root and you'll see the healing come in the rest of their body. Amen? Mm -hmm. If I were to stop there, there could be healing of arthritis, but the damage is caused in their bodies would still be there. So I not only rebuke arthritis, but also speak to the body to repair. I command 
twisted limbs to come back into proper placement, I command pain, swelling, and inflammation to be gone. Thousands and thousands of times I've seen the good result that come from cooperating with this spiritual law. This is a law, guys. This is a spiritual law that's in the kingdom of God. That's why I started talking about the first thing out of the gate when I started teaching is what about what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is God's system or God's way of doing things. And within this God's system and God's way of doing things, there are laws. And you need to cooperate with those laws in order for it to produce. Because it's a kingdom. There are laws there. It's not suggestions. <laughs> You can try this or try that and you just see what works. No, it doesn't work like that. It's a kingdom principle. It's like me crossing the road in England and almost getting run over, right? Almost getting hit by that car. Why? Because I wasn't operating in their kingdom laws. I almost stepped right in front of the car. Was somebody mad at me? Was God punishing me? No, I just wasn't cooperating with their law. Their government wasn't trying to get me, right? It's just a law. And in order to function in the kingdom of God, we need to understand the laws and cooperate with the laws of the kingdom of God, and we will see the power of God move like never before. You must speak. The woman with the issue of blood spoke and said, If I may but touch his coat, I, I'll be made whole. Then she acted on what she believed. It would have done her no good whatsoever if she said what she said but didn't follow through with that action. What if she said, if I can only touch but the hem of his garment, that was her point of faith. But what if she didn't go up there and press through the crowds to touch the hem of his garment? Think about it. What if she was believing that if I can just touch, she was believing that was her point of faith. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, there were people pressing Everybody was touching Jesus. The disciples, when Jesus asked, who touched me? They said, Master, everybody's touching you. What are you talking about? Who touched me? Everybody's touching you. Everybody's touching Jesus. Everybody's trying to get the anointing. Everybody's trying to get something. Everybody's wanting to touch the, the Messiah. Everybody's touching him. What do you mean, who touched you? Somebody touched him. She was sick, and yet she pressed through the crowd. She was probably feeling weak, but she pressed through the crowd. She was probably bullied as she was pressing through that crowd. But she touched the hem of his garment and received what she came for. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to start my preaching here. <laughs> but anyways... Anybody have any questions or any comments? What if when you speak, but you feel like you have unbelief, but you're speaking, but you, like you, you know what I mean? Like you think to yourself, this is kind of silly, but I'm going to be obedient, but is it really going to work? You know what I mean? Yeah, so what happens if you're, that? what happens when you speak, but you still feel the unbelief? Your mind is saying one thing, but your mouth is saying something else. It's like what Andrew said, right? Even though he's, he's, people come to him and they're all messed up, they're in bad shape, right? And he's thinking, he, he feels a fear and unbelief, but he doesn't speak it. Because we can't stop the thought, but I can stop accepting it. He still speaks the positive to the person and ministers life into the situation, regardless of what he's feeling. That's, that's really, really important because we all will feel um, doubt sometimes. Mm -hmm. We'll feel the unbelief sometimes, but we don't act on it. Don't, don't, don't uh, convey that with our words. Amen? Mm -hmm. Good question. What else? Anything else? Michael, I think you have a question for me, don't you? Or a comment? You gotta unmute, though. Actually, I was thinking about when you were talking about prayer. Mm. So, I was gonna, effective 
effective prayer when it when it comes to healing. Um, oh, that's 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 my my um, because they're speaking. Um, so in other words, I guess I guess what I'm saying is, um, if somebody's not in your presence, um, you you pray for them. And would would be effective just speaking God's word when I'm praying for someone. Yeah. Okay. And if they're not with you. Yeah. And you know, do you know what the problem is? Yeah. Like you know what? The, well, like if they have a they have a request, and they're not there with you. Yeah. Then I'm gonna speak life into their situation, whatever it is. Um, if yeah. if somebody's dealing with cancer and they might not be there, I will speak to that cancer. I will curse that cancer. I'm going to speak life into their situation. Um, and I'm just going to put my fate out there uh, and believe God for them. Now, there, there might be things that might hinder them from receiving it, but that's not, that's not up to us. Our place is to speak to it, to speak life into that situation. If they're asking you, if they're asking you to pray for them uh, for healing, now, if they're asking you to pray for healing, then I'm going to speak to that situation. If they're asking you that the, that the surgery goes well or the chemotherapy to go well, then I'm going to speak to that. Does that make sense? If the person's point of faith is that they're going to go have chemo, then God, I'm going to speak to that, that they're not going to have any side effects, that, if, that anything deadly comes into their body, that it will by no means be harmed. I'm still exercising my faith that the treatment will go well, that there will be no side effects, that they will have quick recovery. I speak to their body right now that they will have 100%. There will be no long-term effects in the name of Jesus. See, I can speak to their situation depending on where they're at. Wherever their point of faith is, I'm going to speak to that situation. Make sense? Yeah. So that's why you want to hear where they're at and then speak, in, speak life into whatever they're dealing with, whatever's going on um, with their situation. If they're coming and they're believing for healing, then I'm going to go for it. I'm not going to let my, I'm not going to let my perception or what I think, if they're ready or not, determine whether I'm going to speak to that cancer or not. If they ask me, they tell me they have cancer, can you pray for me? I'm going to curse that cancer. I'm going to speak life to their body. I'm going to command it to repair in the name of Jesus. I'm answering that question, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we, because um, we started this prayer group, okay. you know, at school. Yeah. And so awesome. uh, we have different people uh, requesting prayer, but they're not there. Yeah. So we're just coming together. Yeah. You know, so that's what I was curious about. Yeah. So I'll just do that. Pray for specific, whatever they're asking for. Try to hear what they're asking for, for specifically and then pray yeah. to where they're at. If they're saying, you know, I gotta go have surgery, pray that, yeah. you know. They don't say they say something's wrong with their their wrists, uh, the numbness in their, uh, they have numbness and they have something wrong with their feet, you know, like that. Yeah. And they they uh, that's the request, you know, the healing for healing. But they don't say go to the doctor or anything like that. Yeah. So if something well, like that, I will say whatever is causing the numbness, I curse it at the very roots. I speak yeah. life to that, whatever's, whatever needs to be healed, I command it to be healed right now, in Jesus' name. Yeah. I speak life into their body. I thank you, Jesus, that the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead is dwelling in the, well, the person might not be saved, so they might not have it, but that's okay, we still have that authority. So yeah. depending on the circumstances. But if it's yeah. a Christian, I'm gonna speak that life to them. I'm gonna be, as I'm praying for them, as I'm speaking, I'm reminding them of truth, yeah? So I'm kind of preaching yeah. to them at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Now the important part is um, there's that's this just made me think about something. So as I'm ministering to somebody, like when I'm praying that I thank you, Jesus, that the same Spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells within this person. I am I am ministering to them when I'm saying that I'm not actually speaking to the problem, right? Right. I'm using that to minister to the person, but at the same time, I'm, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to speak. To the sickness i'm going to effectively speak to that sickness i'm going to speak to the financial issue i'm going to speak to whatever it is but at the same time as i'm praying i'm ministering to the person too i'm speaking life i'm speaking truth so that they get them to that place to believe yeah. Yeah. good 
Glenn, you have anything? I'm good. Good. Mm -hmm. Mom, you had anything? You had anything? I like what you said about um, when somebody starts talking negative. And that happened to me a couple of days ago. And talking about all the things that were happening in the world. And I said, I said, okay, I don't want to hear it. Because <laughs> it's a friend that I can say that to. And I said, I don't want to hear it. And I said, because my God shall supply all my needs, all our needs, according to his riches and glory. And so, you know, this yeah. kind of ended the negative <laughs> yeah. um, situation. So, yeah. yeah, you got to really guard your heart. Especially right now, it's important that we guard our hearts. For out of our hearts mm -hmm. would flow the issues of life. We need to guard our hearts. Yeah. When we, when you, and especially if you hear something, you hear something, and you and you feel that coming on you, you feel the weight of what is being said come upon you. You gotta be careful with that. Mm -hmm. You want to counter that quickly. You don't necessarily have to be obnoxious and start rebuking people, but at the same time, you want to counter it like what you did. Mm -hmm. Andrew would just tell him. Straight. <laughs> he's not too. He's not too tactful, but yeah. We can we can change the situation, right? Amen. Awesome. Huh? Yeah. So yeah, if you guys get any other questions or comments, it's getting kind of late already. So you guys can go ahead and text me or email. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay, well, good night. Love you guys. I'm going to let you guys go here. Bye. Bye.